guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Although I've heard great things about this game for years, it wasn't until this year, 2023, that I finally checked out The Binding of Isaac, probably one of the most iconic indie games of all time. And although I'm still learning how to get better at the game, I've definitely been enjoying it. Anyways, in this video we'll be taking a look at the original release of The Binding of Isaac and peeping some unused graphics, audio, and more. And if you're interested in seeing some videos here on the other games and expansions in the series, be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know with a like down below. And with all of that said, it's time to chuck some tears at some feces and find some lost bits. Alright, so first off, there's actually a lone unused enemy that's left over in the files of the game. And this is actually an unused variant of the flying pooter enemies. Now in the game's files, this unused variant is found right after the fat fly, or super pooter as it's known as since afterbirth. So just based on that, it's believed that this unused type might have been a third, more powerful variant for the pooter family. Not gonna lie, that felt pretty weird to say. Anyways, as you can see, this unused variant looked about the same, only its body section would have been a bit longer. Oh, and yeah, there are also these unused graphics for its attacking animation too, which looks similar to the regular pooter, but instead of it being more of a downwards jab, it looks more of like a forward kick here. Now, a third variant of the pooters was actually eventually added with the tainted pooters in Repentance, but the new design obviously looks like much more of an upgrade than these guys did. Next, although this game has a whopping like 200 different items that you can pick up, there's only one that's currently documented as being unused. And although, obviously, I love me my unused content, it's also good to see that the developers implemented pretty much all of the items. Anyways, this unused item is a rather creepy looking pumpkin mask. So apparently, the plan for this pumpkin mask was to grant the player the ability to shoot out a brimstone beam in all four directions. Now, for whatever reason, before the game's Halloween update was put out, where this item was meant to debut, it ended up being replaced by the Lump of Coal item instead, which is extra odd if you consider that's more so related to Christmas than Halloween. That said though, this pumpkin mask was apparently intended to be dropped by Krampus, who is typically associated with Christmas time, so I guess the Lump of Coal makes more sense in that regard. In any case, although this sprite for the pumpkin mask is still in the files of the game, all of its associated properties that were meant for it have been replaced with that of the Lump of Coal. And although this pumpkin mask and its effect never ended up getting used in the original release here, the Binding of Isaac Rebirth remake of the original game introduced the Head of Krampus item that you can get by also defeating Krampus, and wouldn't you know it, it basically has the same effect as the pumpkin mask was originally supposed to have. And thankfully, as such, the item did eventually get to see the light of day, or I guess I should say, the darkness of the dungeons. Now moving on, next up there are a few graphics that are left over unused here in The Binding of Isaac. The first of these are several text entries, all of which are apparently early working names for chapters still seen in the game. There's Hell, which is an early name for the Depths chapter, Hell 2 for Necropolis, Meatopolis for Womb, Meatopolis 2 for Utero, Cave was just given an S to become Caves, so not as big of a change there, Seventh Circle here was the early name for the Sheol chapter, Like a Boss was the early name for the game's special rooms, and finally and simply, Final Stage was the early name for the Cathedral chapter. Then next up, there's also another unused graphic left over here, and that's this one of what looks to be an entrance to a descending staircase. It's been speculated that this may have been an early version of the trapdoors that can be found in the game after beating a boss and such, where instead they might have originally appeared on a wall much like the other doorways. Now sliding into the audio side of things, there are actually quite a few unused sound effects left over in The Binding of Isaac as well. These include monsters yelling and grunting, <coughs> sounds for bullets being shot, a sound for picking up a pill, as well as an alternate version for popping a good pill, an alarm sound effect which based on its file name looks like it was meant to be used for the intro versus screen for fighting a boss, a 
beep sound effect for picking up a key, a sound effect meant for a rocket launcher, and in addition to this rocket launcher sound effect actually being used in a cutscene in Super Meat Boy, Ultimately, a similar sounding effect was used for the rocket in a jar item seen in the Repentance DLC for Rebirth. And then there's also a whooshing and whistle sound effect too. And as you saw, based on the file names for that last pair, it's believed that the fetus part of it may have been referring to Dr. Fetus, the antagonist encountered in Super Meat Boy. And since Edmund McMillan, the designer of this game, also worked on Super Meat Boy, it's entirely possible that these two sound effects were reused from that game. Now, it's no shocker that The Binding of Isaac took heavy inspiration from the original Legend of Zelda for the NES, from gameplay to the heads-up display to even the name of the game itself. Then, to add to all of that, the last unused sound effect here played into that as well. And it didn't shy away from its inspiration either, being straight up titled, Power Up Zelda Headlift. And as the name seemingly confirms, this sound effect was once intended to be used when a character would pick up one of the game's items and hold it above their head, just like Link does in the original Legend of Zelda. And while we're talking about The Legend of Zelda, much like some of the unused dungeon layouts that we covered in my video on the first Zelda game, The Binding of Isaac also has quite a few room layouts that were added with the Wrath of the Lamb DLC that, although left over in the game, these aren't ever normally accessible. For these standard chapters, there are three unused room layouts for the basements, the caves, as well as the depths, and then only a pair of them for the womb chapter. And then we got like 11 for the Sheol chapter, including several with bosses, a few with treasure chests or other items smack dab in the middle, one with a beggar surrounded by spikes, and more. Then there's also the same spiky beggar room equivalent for the Cathedral chapter. And then finally, there are two unused chest rooms, one which would contain Super Greed, and then the other with Super Gluttony. Now, most of the unused Sheol rooms have layout copies that are used in the game's Cathedral chapter, or there are rooms that are very similar to them. And it's been theorized that the reason that all of these rooms aren't normally encountered in the game isn't intentional, but rather due to an oversight in their implementation. Although, sure, these rooms each seem pretty cool in their own right, it's not like the game is lacking or anything with their omission. And that, my friends, is about it for the original release of The Binding of Isaac, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, subscribe and ring the bell to make your way back to the channel in the future, and yeah, like I said at the start, let me know if you'd be interested in some videos on the other games and expansions in this series. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.